Hello everyone, this is Rania Helet and this is the podcast of Stories of the Middle East. And I'm so glad to start this podcast with a very interesting season. Um, in this season it will be the biography of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, or the life of the Prophet Muhammad. I will be sharing stories from his Sira. As in Arabic we say it's Sira Nabawe, which is a biography of Sayyidina Muhammad. And there is a lot of things that we can learn from these stories. Uh, whether you are Muslim or non-Muslim, I think there is part that can help you for self-development and also to inspire you in your life. So actually this season is basically about the biography and uh, the next season we will share more stories also from the Middle East. I'm waiting for your comments and suggestions if you find there is more things to share. Uh, I'm always glad to listen to your opinion. So let's start our episode for today, which is about how it all began. By meaning that, specifically, we're talking about all the Abrahamic religions. So how all the Abrahamic religion began. And from that we can understand the biography of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So actually, nearly 4,000 years ago, in the Sumerian town of Ur, in the valley of the river Ifurat, lived a young man named Abraham, which is Sayyidina Ibrahim in Arabic. The people of Ur had once worshipped Allah, but as time passed, they forget the true religion and started praying to idols, statues made of wood or clay, and sometimes even of precious stones. Even as a small child, Ibrahim couldn't not understand how these people, and especially his father, could make this image with their own hands, call them gods, and then worship them. He had always refused to join his people when they paid respect to these statues. Instead, he would leave the town and sit alone, thinking about the heavens and the world about him. He was sure his people were doing wrong, and so alone, he searched for the right way. One clear night, as he sat staring at the sky, he saw a beautiful shining star. So beautiful that he cried out, this must be Allah. He looked at it and over some time, until suddenly it began to fade and then it disappeared. He turned away in disappointment and saying, I love not things that set. On another night, Abraham was again looking at the sky and he saw the rising moon so big and bright that he felt he could almost touch it. He thought to himself, this is my Lord, but it was not long before the moon set as well. Then he said, unless my Lord guide me, I will surely shall become one of the folk who are astray. Abraham then saw the beauty and splendor of the sunrise and decided that the sun must be the biggest and most powerful thing in the universe. But for the third time, he was wrong, for the sun set at the end of the day. It was then that he realized that Allah is the most powerful, the creator of the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth, and all living things. Suddenly, he felt himself totally in peace, because he knew that he had found the truth. So actually, this part will remind us that peace always in the belief. The belief of the existence of Allah will always make us in a peace mind state. And when he said unto his father and his folk, what do you worship? They said, we worship idols and are ever devoted to them. He said, do they hear you when you cry or do they benefit or harm you? They said, nay, but we found our fathers acting in this manner. He said, See now, that which you worship, you and your forefathers, they are all an enemy to me, except the Lord of the worlds, who created me, and he guides me, and who feeds me and waters me. And when I'm seeking, he heals me, and who causes me to die, then gives me left again, and who I ardently hope will forgive me for my sins and the day of the judgment. One day, while all the town people were out, Abraham angrily smashed all the idols with his right hand, except for one which was very large when the people returned, they were furious. They remembered the things that Abraham had said about the idols. 
they had him brought forth before everyone and demanded, Is it you who did this to our gods? O oh, Abraham! Abraham replied, But this is their chef did it. Ask them if they are able to speak. The people exclaimed, You know, they don't speak. Do you worship what you yourselves have curved when Allah created you? And what you make? Abraham continued, Do you worship any state of Allah that which cannot profit you at all nor harm you? Finally, Abraham warned them, Serve Allah and keep your duty into Him. That is better for you if you did, but no, you serve instead of Allah only idols. You only invent and lie. Those whom you serve instead of Allah own no provision for you. So seek your provision from Allah and serve Him and give thanks unto Him. Unto Him you will be brought back. Because of this incident, the people of earth decided to give the worst punishment ever to Abraham, which is burning him alive with a very strong flames of fires. But a miracle happened at that day when Allah said, O fire, be coolness and peace for Abraham. The people waited until the fire had completely died down, and it was then that they saw Abraham still sitting there and thought nothing had happened. At that moment they were all three confused. They were not however moved by the miracle that had just happened before their eyes. Still Abraham tried to persuade his own father, but actually his father didn't listen to him and he sent him away from the town. And then it started another story for Abraham, where he had to leave his land and his people to seek the forgiveness of Allah and to think following his path to Allah. Imagine how terrible it must have been for him to leave his home, his family and all he knew and set out across the wilderness into unknown. But at the same time, how could he have remained among people who did not believe in Allah and who worshipped status? Abraham has always had a sense that Allah cared for him and he felt Allah near him as he traveled. At last, after a long hard journey, he arrived into a place by the Mediterranean Sea. Not far from Egypt, it's a place called Palestine. And he had married his noble woman who named Sarah and settled in the land of Palestine. Many years passed, but Abraham and his wife were not blessed by any children. In the hope that there were would be a child, and in keeping with tradition, Sarah suggested that Abraham would marry Hagar. She was her Egyptian handmaid. Soon after this took place, Hagar gave a birth to a little child named Ishmael, or in Arabic, Ismail. Sometime later, Allah promised Abraham another son, but this time from the first wife, Sarah. The second son would be called Isaac, or in Arabic, Ishaq. Allah also told Abraham that from his two sons, Ismail and Isaac, there's two nations and three religions. So that was the birth of the three Abrahamic religions. And because of this, he must take Hajar and Ismail away from Palestine to a new land. This event were an important part of Allah's plan, for the descendants of Ismail would form a nation from which would come a great prophet, who would guide the people in the way of Allah. This is was to be Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the Messenger of Allah. From the descendants of Sarah's child, Isaac, would come Moses and Jesus. So it was that Abraham, Hajar and Ismail left Palestine. They traveled for many days until finally they reached the Arid Valley of Bakka, later to be called Mecca which was on one of the great caravan roads. There was no water in the valley, and although Hajar and Ismail only had a small supply of water left, Abraham left them there knowing Allah would take care of them. Soon all the water was gone. The child began to grow weak from thirst. There were two hills nearby, one called Safa and the other Marwa. Hajar went up to hell from one hill to another. Seven times she did that, 
searching for water for her child. When she went back, she was sad and disappointed not finding water for her child. But there was a surprise for her. There was a spring of water bubbling out of earth near him, the spring near which the mother and child settled. It was later called Zamzam. And then later, the place became the caravans traveling across the desert and in that time grew, it became the famous trading city of Mecca. From time to time, Abraham traveled from Palestine to visit his family and he saw Ismail grow into a strong young man. And it was during one of his visits that Allah commanded them to rebuild the Kaaba, the very first place where people had worshipped Allah. They were told exactly where and how to build it. It was to be eradicated by the will of Zamzam and built in the shape of a cube. In the eastern corner was to be placed a black stone that had fallen to earth from heaven. An angel brought the stone to them from a nearby hill of Abu Kibayas. Abraham and Ismail made a special dua while they are putting the foundation of Kaaba. They prayed that a prophet from their descendants will come and start the nation, which is exactly what would happen years later. When the Kaaba was completed, Allah commanded Abraham to call mankind to pilgrimage to his holy house. Abraham wondered how anyone could hear his call. Allah said, you call and I will bring them. This was how the pilgrimage to Kaaba in Mecca was established and when Muslims make the pilgrimage today, they continue to answer the age-old call of Abraham. I think this story is always a story of a strong belief in God and how we are connected to him. This is how Abraham started the Abraham religions and now they have many followers that they believe in Allah and worship him. To be continued in the next episode, hope you enjoyed this one and I'm waiting for your comments and suggestions. See you in next episode.